Church. Today we are going to have the Easter message. And let's bow for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we come before your throne of grace. We want to thank you because of such a love that you have bestowed upon mankind. And that is why, God, you've given us Jesus Christ to come and die on the cross of Calvary and take away our sins so that we may be reconnected back with you. We want to thank you because of such a love and we want to pray that, Father, you're going to hold our hearts and help us to continue moving uh, with you, Jehovah, King of glory, and even obeying your will. God, as you speak to us, we ask that, God, you are going to help us to open our inner ears and we are going to listen to your voice and hearken unto it and even practice it that God may bless us. This we pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Praise the Lord, church. So today we want to hear the message, Easter message, and it is the message of resurrection. So Jesus Christ is no longer in the grave. He has already risen. We want to look at the scripture from the book of Matthew, chapter 28. We read the first 10 verses. Praise the Lord. So we are in a season of uh, Easter where we remember the great love of God when God had separated man from himself because of sin. And there was a gap between uh, God and the man he had created because of the sin that came in. But because God loved the world, he decided that the man I created, I created him for a divine purpose to have fellowship with me and to walk you know, with me so that he can have dominion of all the other things that I have created and so that he can be worshiping me. So, and the Bible tells us from the book of uh, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. So we see a case where now Jesus you know, has been given out by our God so that he can come and take our place. You know, after man sinned, sin, he was destined for death. But God felt, no, this is not the purpose for which I created man. I did not create him to be separated with me so that he may die. I created him to have fellowship with, him, with me and to live with me uh, eternally. So we find that now Jesus you know, is born and Jesus grows up and Jesus gets into the ministry and he was in the ministry for three years. And during those three years, he did the mission that God had sent him to do. And he had his followers, the followers of Jesus who are called the disciples. And before he even these things came, before he was crucified, before he was punished, he had to prepare the disciples. They had lived with the disciples for about three years. And Jesus started preparing you know, the disciples uh, from the book of John 14, uh, verse one. So when he was preparing the disciples, they felt they were afraid. They were troubled. They were wondering, now, what is this message that Jesus is giving us? If he's going to leave us, because he was telling them, you will, a time is going to come when you're not going to see me anymore. And then they were troubled. And Jesus looking at him, and he understood them. And he found that they were troubled. John 14, verse 1, Jesus told them, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God and also in me. So he promised them that he is going to prepare them a place. And he tells me just to believe in him. And when they believed you know, in him, then they would be able to live even without him in the physical. Because they were to live with him in the spirit. So Jesus also promises to give them a helper. He tells them that I am not going uh, to leave you like orphans. The book of John 14, from verse 15 to 17, uh, he say, the, the Bible says that, uh, if you love me and keep my commandments, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forevermore. He says, I will give you the comforter. You will get a comforter. You will get an advocate, the Holy Spirit. So 
he found that the, the disciples were to be afraid and he, uh, he told them, you will not be alone. So you will have a helper, the Holy Spirit. I'll ask the Father to be with you. And he continued on to prepare his disciples. He even washed his, their feet. He even had a supper with them. They fed together. And from there he journeyed on uh, to the punishment of being beaten and even being crucified. And he was crucified uh, together with the feet. We have read now the chapter 28 that Jesus Christ has already risen from the dead. So we find that Mary, Magdalene, and the other Mary, they went to the tomb. They are going to look for Jesus there. But when they went there, there was an earthquake and there was the lightning. And when they went there, you know, the guards were so afraid. But as they were going, there was a man who was just next to the tomb. And uh, he looked at them and uh, he told them, do not be afraid. I know whom you are looking for. You're looking for Jesus. Uh, and another scripture say that uh, they thought it was a gardener. And when they look at the tomb and it's like Jesus was not there, they ask, tell us, have you taken him away? And Jesus tells them, no, do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. Jesus Christ, who was crucified, has come from the dead. He has already resurrected. He has defeated the power no, of uh, death. That is why they were being told, do not be afraid. But then they were sent to go and tell the disciples where Jesus uh, was, and also to go and tell the other brothers no, where to go. They go to Galilee, where Jesus no, would be. They were told, go to Galilee, because Jesus is not in the tomb. The message today is that do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Go and tell the brothers. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, not to go to the dead because Jesus is not a midst among the dead. He has already risen and he has gone uh, to the Father. So we look at uh, today as we celebrate Jesus Christ who hung on the cross and died no, for our sake. Jesus Christ is not dead. He has already risen from the dead. He has defeated the power of death. And this is the confidence that we have that we are going to live forevermore because Jesus Christ, our Savior, has defeated the power of the dead. Jesus Christ is not on the cross. Today, where are we looking for Jesus? We are searching for Jesus. We could be afraid because of the very many things that would be facing us. Like the disciples were already afraid. Mary, the mother of Jesus, and the other women, they were already afraid that they have taken Jesus. Jesus is already dead and they were, they were feeling down. Who will be with us? Who is going to perform miracles for us? When we need healing, who is going to heal us? When we, need, we are hungry, who is going to feed us? So they were afraid, but Jesus is saying, do not be afraid. The message is, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. Jesus is giving instructions on what, where we are going to find him. When we looked at the book of Chronicles chapter 20, there was a time, so when the Moabites and the Ammonites came towards the children to fight the children of Israel, and the king was King Jehoshaphat, and some people took a report, and they said, a first army is coming against us. But what did Jehoshaphat do? Verse 6, the Bible says he consulted the Lord, the Lord God of ancestors. Verse 15, God told Jehoshaphat, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged. The battle is not yours, the battle is mine. Do not be afraid because of the first army, the battle is not yours, the battle is mine. Tomorrow, march down tomorrow, go to where they are. Stand your position, wait to see the deliverance no, of the Lord. Today, brethren, what are we afraid of? In the world today, there is this virus we are calling coronavirus, and it's like everyone is afraid. And uh, we are looking at it, some of us are looking at it, could it be it is the end of the world? And we are trying to look back what was prophesied some time ago. We are reading books, we are trying to search from books. What did so and 
and so say, what did that creature say? What happened in those ears? No, of old. And we are just afraid and wondering whether it is at the end of time. God is a God of instruction. Like Jesus was instructing the people, go to Galilee, don't go to the tomb. Where are we looking for Jesus? Don't look for him at the cross, he's not there. Don't look for him at the tomb, he's not there. God is telling King Jehoshaphat, do not be afraid, go down tomorrow. And wait, stand your position, wait to see the deliverance of the Lord. This is the message that God is giving us today as the people of Kenya, as Christians today that we should not be afraid. Why? The book of Nahum 1 verse 7, God is a refuge. The Lord God is a refuge in times of trouble. Psalms 84 verse 11, God is a shield. God is a shield to his own people. Isaiah 43 verse 2, God is a strength. When you pass through waters, you will not be swept, the waters will not overwhelm you. At this time of coronavirus in the world, in our nation, what do we need to do, brethren? We need to trust God. The other one, we need to heed to instructions. Just like we hear God instructing his people, God has given us readership in this nation. And even in the world, attract their readers. Let us obey, let us heed to the instructions. We are being told to stay at home, observe social distances, put on masks, all these safety measures. We are supposed to take the safety measures. We are supposed to obey. God is a God of instruction and a God of order. He has given our readers the instruction to give to their people. And more so, adding to that, let us trust God who is telling us, do not be afraid, do not be dismayed. I am going to rescue, I am going to save you. The book of Psalms and 91, the Bible reminds us that whoever dwells under the shelter of the Almighty God is going to be protected by God. A thousand will come and fall by the side and they shall not fear. They shall not even fear the pestilence of the day because the Lord God is going to be with them. So brethren, the Lord is going to be with us. Christ is risen, Christ has victory, Christ is already in heaven. He's already risen so we can raise up our hands and say, that Christ is risen, he has defeated the power of death, so we have the victory. He has, he was beaten for our sake, so that we receive healing. Those who are sick with coronavirus, they will get healed because Christ has defeated sickness and death. God bless you. Let's pray. We thank you, Heavenly Father, because of your word. We pray that your word is going to be a light into our path and it is going to be a lamp unto our feet. That, Lord God, as we walk, we are not going to stumble, but we are going to see the light and we are going to light, walk in the light of salvation. We thank you and we honor you for we pray in Jesus' holy name.